Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another wonderful episode of Watch Me Wrench with your host, Mr. Wrench. Um, and for those of you who are just joining in for the first time, I hope you enjoy the channel. And if you could please click the like and subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. It means a lot to a small channel like myself. Every subscribe and every like really helps out. So what are we doing today? Um, you heard me mention in a previous video that I do not, I'm not happy with all the different shades of uh, aluminum and chrome and stainless steel. The oil catch can is one shade, this is another, that's another, that's another, the uh, throttle body is another. It's just uh, too many conflicting colors, so I want to paint the oil catch can semi-gloss black pretty much the same manner in which I did the uh, pipe for the big red race valve. Um, it came out really well. And another reason why, and I'm also going to change the fittings here. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because when I want to check the contents of the oil catch can, which is now the oil catch can has no blow-by ever since I did the heads and cam, the car no longer suffers from blow-by. I don't know, go figure. But anyhow, I do check it routinely. And it's a huge pain in the neck because there's not enough room for me to get my hand in here and I can't get the right leverage to undo the base to check the contents. So what I have to do is I usually just undo these two little screws and then I have to pull off these hoses, which is the worst part. It's actually very difficult because these are uh, these barbed uh, type fittings. So they grab onto here and it's really difficult to pull them off and what also happens is you wind up chewing up the inside of the hose every time you pull them on and off. So I'm going to change the fittings to make life easier and I'm going to paint this black. Hopefully I can finish today, probably not because maybe I'll allow it 24 hours to fully dry. We'll see. Alright so let's go over to the bench. Okay so this is what I'm going to use to paint the car. I'm going to, uh, to paint the car. God forbid. So this is what I'm going to use to paint the oil catch can. This Rust-Oleum primer. Then I will use this Rust-Oleum acrylic enamel, semi-gloss black. And then I will use the Rust-Oleum acrylic enamel gloss clear. So that's how I'll paint it. And here are the fittings. So why did I go with this setup? Well, because the, let's just see. The 3 8 PVC line will attach here. This will be attached to the top of the oil catch can. So when I want to check the oil catch can, instead of having to struggle and pull off those uh, PVC lines, I could just take a wrench and undo this, pull it out, do the same with this one, undo it, pull it off, and then take the two screws off, and I can have the oil catch can out and literally one or two minutes versus seven to ten minutes of struggling to pull the damn holes off and then scratching your knuckles against you know sharp metal edges in the car. So I spent thirty-five dollars for these fittings at a local speed shop. Um, and that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna take the oil catch can off. I will scuff it up with this scotch pad and I'll even use this sanding block. This is a fine, uh, I have coarse, I have medium grit, and then this is a fine grit. So I'm not going to make uh, big grooves in the oil catch can. You want to do this because you want the paint to have something to bite to, something to adhere to. Well, where if you just left the oil catch can alone and just painted over that, it'll, you could uh, pretty much bet that it'll uh, just flake off and peel off. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll, I'll even take, um, after I'm done sanding and cleaning, I will take some uh, just regular old rubbing alcohol, put it on a rag, and wipe it down so that we can get rid of any uh, oils, grease, fingerprints, any dust from the sanding. And I'll, uh, hopefully it works out well. I'll just show you guys a little uh, modification I did to my garage. I've got my other two sets of tires up there. I bought those uh, tire racks. 
Those were actually just 32 bucks each from Amazon. Of course, they were made in China, which you know, I'm not happy about. But they're actually pretty sturdy. Um, I would have liked to have had, you know, my drag strip wheels here and then the uh, original factory wheels over there. But um, I was misinformed because on the uh, listing on Amazon, it said they are 48 inches wide. But they're actually not. They're 43 inches wide. Well, you only have 43 inches from that brace to that brace to set your tires. You do have 48 from beam to beam. But the way they had it written, it led you to believe that you had 48 inches of distance across to put your tires, which the factory wheels, if you stack them all up, measure out to exactly 48 inches. So I had to like kind of mix them up. So you can see like you got a drag radial there, a skinny there, a front factory wheel there, and then another rear drag radial. And over there you got one skinny and three of the factory wheels. But uh, I used to just keep them in my shed and I would lose sleep over this because you know I've got many thousands of dollars worth of wheels just sitting in my shed which I was always very nervous about. You know, the shed is new and no rain or weather gets in there. But, you know, it just has one of those cheesy little locks that anybody could break off and somebody would have had a field day if they broke into my shed. So, they're up there, they're out of the way, and more importantly, I've got so much more room in my shed now. So I was able to remove some items from the garage and put them in the shed and organize the shed a little better. All right, so let me get to it. I'll be back, and then I am going to have to trim the uh, coil cover that I had on this side because of the return fuel line that we made. It kind of wants to hit here. Well, not kind of wants to. It does hit. It doesn't have enough room, so I'm going to have to trim the back of it. All right, so that's it. All right, let me get to it. Let me work on that thing, and I'll be back. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So it's the next day, and I've got it painted. I've got it installed. I've got the new fittings on, and that looks absolutely amazing. It came out great. I put two coats of primer, three coats of... Uh, semi-gloss black and then I did four coats of clear coat and um, it pretty much it pretty much took me all day yesterday I would uh, allow the paint to dry an hour in between each coat per the manufacturers recommendation and it really came out great it doesn't look like it's spray painted. It looks like it's powder coated. The fittings worked out well. It's just such a it's just such a clean installation. It looks so uh, uh, it just looks a million times better. Thoroughly impressed. And so now when I want to check my oil, all I have to do is undo these two little Allen key bolts. Take a wrench, I think what is it, 11 sixteenths, just undo this, undo this, and I could pull that out. Because there's really no room to undo the bottom half to pull it out. There is a drain plug, but you can't even get anything in there. So it should only take me maybe one or two minutes to disconnect that and get it out now. And I don't have to struggle with the uh, pulling off these hoses anymore. Uh, such a clean look, that looks awesome. And uh, that's it. Oh, so happy. So happy. Try to get a close up. Looks powder coated. Came out really well. So now the only question is do I paint that black and paint that black? I'm just worried about the black absorbing heat and then that intake air will be hotter and maybe that one don't know but uh thoroughly impressed
So happy. So happy. And these fittings, they look awesome. Wonderful. So happy. So if you're as happy as I am, please give this video a thumbs up. Actually, let me uh, modify that fuel, that uh, coil cover for that side. And there is the finished product, ladies and gentlemen. I just had to notch it. Actually, it took a while. I always try to notch as little as possible, so I had to keep coming back and forth to test fit. And it has about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch clearance. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to have to extend this hose about one inch to bring this over more. just don't like how it sits just to reposition it. All right, gotta clean this motor down, gotta do a nice detail job. All right guys, so that's it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. If you click the like and subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Have a great day. Take care.